Hey guys, we're going to look at a line in the Carol Khan, which has been very trendy lately. It's e4, c6, knight of 3, d5, pawn to d3 by white. So it's not quite the king's Indian attack for white, and it's also not quite the two knights attack for white. So we have a chess goals Carol Khan course. In that course, we don't cover this exact line. So we only cover 100 lines, and we try to make it easily digestible. So I'm going to give an official recommendation here for the chess goals course. I think we should play bishop to g4. And our VIP chess goals member Bob just had this happen recently in his game. This was a request of him to make this video. Bishop to g4 pins the knight on f3. And what we're doing is we're avoiding the immediate queen trade after d takes e, d takes e, swap queens. In our chess goals course, we try to avoid the queen trades unless we feel we have good chances to win or it's the best move by a little bit of a margin over any other move. Here, I don't think we want to go into the queen trade. So let's keep the queens on, bishop g4. And our plan next is to play e6 and create this triangle pawn formation. Bishop to e2 by white. This is the most popular response. Occurs in about 39% of club level games. So here I'm recommending e6. There's the triangle. And after h3, we're not going to take this knight. And the reason we're not taking the knight is we want to encourage white to play pawn to g4. When white plays g4, that opens up the king side, and that's where the white king wants to hide. So remember that. Drop the bishop back, encourage g4. Okay, so let's say white castles. Now we can go bishop to d6, pointing at the h2 square, and our plan is eventually we might play f6. So keep that flexibility of bringing the knight into e7 next. Knight c3, knight to e7. You do want to watch out for knight f6 here. With the bishop on d6 and the knight on f6, there's potential for this e5 fork. And probably the move where that would happen is knight f6, g4, kick this guy away so there's no capture on f3. So g4, that moves, and then e5, creating the fork. So keep that fork in mind. Knight to e7, bishop to g5 by white, castle. And in this point, there's 16 games in the club level database. Black is winning 81% of those games to white's 13 win, wait, win rate. So I think black is doing pretty well here. Engine says that it's close to equal, maybe even a small advantage for black. And now let's leave you with a plan like we do in the Chess Goals Carol Khan course. What we would like to do is play knight to d7, pawn to f6, kicking that bishop away, rook to c8, and then pawn to c5. Then this bishop will probably drop back to f7 at some point. So nice solid structure. Hopefully this line isn't too scary. That's the main line. Now, let's go back a little bit and show a mistake that white can make. So going back to bishop to d6, a tempting move for white here is to play pawn to e5. And this is something that you're more likely to see at lower ratings and faster time controls, a blunder like this. It's a natural looking move. But here we can simply play bishop takes f3. And the problem for white now is there's no good response. Uh, if bishop takes f3, we're going to take the pawn on e5. So the strongest move for white is to take this bishop first. But now we have this nice in-between move. We're not going to play queen takes d6. We're going to trade off that e2 bishop. Queen takes back. Now we take on d6. So do a quick count of the material. You can see we have eight pawns. White has seven. And I would say there's very minimal compensation for white. Slight compensation because they castled first, but nothing to worry about. All right, so now we're going to go back and look at one other line because I think it's a critical line that we definitely need to cover. All the way back to when we play bishop g4, let's look at pawn to h3 by white. What happens if white goes after that bishop right away and plays g4 next? So h3, g4, I think that's the line that you have to kind of make sure that you're comfortable with when you play bishop to g4. So we're going to drop the bishop back again, pawn to g4, we retreat. Uh, d takes e is possible there, but again, I want to avoid the queen trade. Knight to e5, most common move. White wants to immediately trade off that knight on e5 for the bishop on g6, and that gives white what's called the bishop pair, when white has two bishops and we only have a bishop and a knight. Usually an advantage, but here with all the pawns on the board, it's solid, and we're okay giving up the bishop pair. Pawn to e6, creating this pawn triangle again. Knight takes g6, h takes g, and now knight to d7. This is a sneaky move. What we would like to play is d takes e4, and after white takes back, we're not going for the queen trade, so we're kind of blocking that queen trade with knight to d7. It's also a very flexible move. We haven't decided where we're putting this bishop and this knight yet. Knight to c3. So now we can take on e4. 
And at this point, the position's about equal, and I'm going to stop the line here, and you can explore a little bit. But I think there is play for both sides, so that's the nice thing. Our plan is to play knight g to f6 and bishop to e7. So those two moves we're pretty much going to play no matter what. But then at that point, you have some flexibility here to play with. You could play a kingside castle, or you could bring your queen to c7 and queenside castle. So you have play on both sides. All right, so that's the Karo Khan with knight f3 and d3. Official chess goals recommendation. Check out our chess goals course. There's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.